Alrighty, who's ready to keep learning about bones of the human skeleton? All right, so we are going to continue our discussion here with our pelvic girdle, and we're going to talk about the oscoxa. All right, so let's get started. All right, we're going to begin here with our articulated pelvises, and so we have a male and a female pelvis, and so we're going to look at how to tell the difference between the two. All right, so let's start. Here we have two oscoxa, and we will have this thing called the subpubic angle down here. And so this is the pubic symphysis, and this is a piece of fibrocartilage that sits between the two uh, oscoxa on the anterior side. So there's our subpubic angle right there. And if we look at this one here, there we have the subpubic angle, and note that it's a little more narrow. All right, so when these two bones are articulated together, we can see narrow and wider. Now, if we take a look up here at the top of the oscoxa, this is the ilium of the oscoxa, and this is the other ilium. Uh, the plural would be ilia. And you can see that they kind of flare out laterally, all right, creating more of a bowl shape. Whereas you compare this other one, you can see that these ilia kind of go more upright, all right, and we don't quite have that same uh, shape to this pelvis. And so look inside, mm-hmm, look inside, mm-hmm. Which one of these do you think a baby's head is more likely to get through? All right, so yes. So if you haven't already guessed, this one over here is the female pelvis, and this one would be our male. All right, there's another feature that we can look at that can be important when telling an individual oscoxa bone from the, the other, right, male versus female. And so it's this little opening or this kind of space right here, and it's called the greater sciatic notch. So look how narrow that one is on the male pelvis versus on our female pelvis, right? That opening of the greater sciatic notch is much larger. All right, so that's how we tell male from female when you have an articulated pelvis and when you have individual oscoxa. All right, let's talk about the individual oscoxa. All right, let's look at our individual oscoxa bones. Okay, so when they're kind of sitting on a surface, we don't quite see fully an anterior versus a posterior versus a medial view because up in here is kind of, you know, anterior. Back here is kind of posterior. You know, if we were to look at them like this, we would see a little bit better of the anterior versus back here, which would be the posterior. So you got to get to know what features are where compared to others because you won't always have it fully sitting in an anterior versus a posterior view because posterior is back here anteriors here, and then this is medial. All right, so let's take a look at these two. So here in the hand that I'm moving the bone, that's gonna be the left oscoxa, and then this one here is our right oscoxa. So let's take a look here at the left one. Okay, so first we're gonna look at the three individual um, bones that fuse together to form the oscoxa. Up here you have the ilium, back here, Right back here would be the ischium. And then up front here we have the pubis. All right, so let's start up here on the ilium. So up at the top of the ilium, that's what we call the iliac crest. All right, and then on the towards the back side, we have this rough surface, and this is where the sacrum would articulate. And we're going to learn the sacrum when we get to the axial skeleton and talk about the vertebra. But that's the auricular surface. Now, on this anterior portion of the ilium, we have these two kind of pointed areas. So this is the anterior superior iliac spine, and this would be the anterior inferior iliac spine. Now, if we go towards the posterior end, we see the post, whoops, let me actually point to it, the posterior superior iliac spine, and then the posterior inferior iliac spine. All right, if we continue down from these two iliac spines, the posterior 
superior and posterior inferior, we then get to the greater sciatic notch. And then here is going to be what's called the ischial spine. And then this one doesn't show it very well, but here we have our lesser sciatic notch. That's just a little notch right there. So greater sciatic notch, this space right here, ischial spine, and then lesser sciatic notch. All right, we have this big opening right here. This is what's called the obturator foramen. A foramen is gonna be an opening. And as we get up here, we can see this is where the pubic symphysis would sit if we were to articulate these two together. Right here, a feature that's actually made up of multiple of all three of these bones, this big depression right here, that's called the acetabulum. Now the acetabulum is where the head of the femur would articulate with this bone. So that's why this is medial over here. And then at the bottom portion here, where we have the ischium, we have this ischial tuberosity, right? Remember, tuberosity is kind of a rough area. So this is the ischial tuberosity. And this is actually what we would be sitting on, right? When you feel that bone in your butt. So if you've ever taken uh, Pilates, they will often refer to, you know, getting on your sits bones. Well, they want you to get up on the, or you move towards those ischial tuberosities that you would be sitting on. All right. So now that we also know a little bit about how to tell the difference between a male and female pelvis and a male and female uh, oscoxa, if it's not an articulated pelvis, take a look here at this greater sciatic notch and think, is this a male or a female? Okay, take a look also at, if we were to put this like this, the ilia, the ilium here, right? Hmm, I'm not going to tell you though. That's for you to guess. All right, and that is the end of the Oscoxa.